CataractCoach.com, femtolaser or forceps capsorexis? Which is better and which is which? Look at that picture. Can you even tell? So let me show you a case first with the forceps. So I'm using a diamond keratome to make that main incision. The diamond keratome makes a much better incision than the femtosecond laser. Yes, it's true. You're better off with the diamond than you are with the laser. That's for sure. There's no question about that one. Here comes the capsular rexus. So we're going to start poking in and we're tearing it. So a capsular rexus, the word rex in there is to tear. And so we're tearing a capsule opening that's five millimeters in diameter. And you can see we're doing my special force that have been marked off at the tip. And the advantage of tearing it is the edges are really strong. It's a continuous, clean, smooth edge. If you look at the scanning electron micrographs of these, you'll see that it's really quite beautiful and strong. So let's speed up the rest of the case. This is not the important part. We want to discuss the capsulotomy opening, comparing those forceps to the laser. Now, the femtosecond lasers, we've had them for more than 10 years, and so many studies have been published. And let's be frank here, we've talked about this before. Studies have shown there's essentially no difference in, re in the outcomes for these patients. The only thing different was for astigmatism greater than adopter, but let's be frank, you would have put a torque lens in anyway. So there's that round opening. That's a beautiful capsular rexus. Looks great. We're going to show you the lens insertion too because that helps us determine or measure the size, right? We know the optic of the lens is six millimeters. The reason we wanted that five to five and a half millimeter capsular rexus was to overlap the optic edge to hold it um, in position. And as we open that up, and you can see there's that six millimeter optic. Again, this is a lens that is a um, six millimeter wide optic acrylic lens. And as we remove the viscoelastic, you'll see this is a beautiful capsular axis. So this is a strong, great capsular axis. And one more thing, look at the white conjunctiva there. No subconjunctival hemorrhages, right? Exactly. And so there are no subconjunctival hemorrhage because you don't have to apply that suction ring that you do with a femtosecond laser. Right, to couple the femtosecond laser to the eye, you're using a suction ring that can cause subconjunctival hemorrhage. So there's that um, extended depth of focus lens, beautifully centered. Look at that rex's edge, overlaps very nicely. And this was just made with forceps. Sometimes it helps to think from a different perspective. What if the norm, the normal, was to use a half million dollar laser to make a capsule opening? And then someone invented, hey, look, I can get these forceps for a few hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, these forceps, and you can make an equally good or sometimes even better opening just with these forceps. You'd say, wow, what an improvement. That is amazing. For one five hundredth the cost, you can have these forceps and you can achieve the same thing, but you've got to improve your hands. So surgeon hands play a big role here. And yes, in novice hands or a beginning surgeon hand, femoral second laser may be more reproducible, but for an expert, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Now let's skip over to watching a femto case. So here's an anonymous surgeon operating. Look at that, the incision being made with a steel keratome. Why, what happened to the, the femoral second laser? And the answer is, of course, the steel blade. It's not as good as the diamond, but even the steel blade is better than the femoral second laser for making an incision. So there you go, there's the capsulotomy that's already done. You can see the round opening there, and the lens nucleus already has those sextants or the one-sixth pieces broken up, and that can be removed. So let's just fast forward this. All the pieces come out pretty easily, and there's the nucleus out as well. Now, if you look at the edge of the femtosecond laser capsulotomy, and it's not a capsular rexus because nothing was torn. It's a capsulotomy because you made a hole there in the capsule, the way you do it with the femtosecond laser is thousands of tiny little spots of the laser. And those are all connected. So kind of like the edge of a postage stamp. And so that's literally what it looks like. Here at the end of the case, delivering the lens. And there's the lens going in the capture bag. And you'll see again, it'll have a nice case of good overlap of the optic by that capsular axis. And so while they both look about the same here, remember, if you look at scanning electron micrographs of the edge of that capsulotomy that's made with the femtosecond laser, you'll see it looks like a postage stamp with per perforated edges there. Now, if you look at the conjunctiva, look at that ring of bleeding, that subconjunctival hemorrhage is very typical, and that's where you had the suction ring 
to couple the eye to the femtosecond laser. And look at the lens, by the way, the same exact lens. Looks like that's a six millimeter optic on an acrylic extended depth of focus lens. And now getting that centered up here, I will show you that it looks nearly identical. So you can go back to that title slide and look at it in detail and try to compare it. You tell me if there's a big difference. But we've got to be honest with each other. There's really not a humongous difference here. So yes, a femtosecond laser can make it more reproducible or consistent, especially among surgeons who have less experience. But for novice or younger surgeons, if you have less than a few thousand cases of experience, be careful. Don't get too reliant on using the femtosecond laser for every case. You need to develop the skills in your hand to use those forceps to create a beautiful capsorexis. So I encourage you to try for yourself, use both techniques, and I think you'll find out what I found out, which is in most cases, you can have a beautiful result and probably even a better result in terms of strength and stability with the capsorexis forceps as opposed to relying on the femtosecond laser. So important lessons here. If you're a patient watching this, Listen, it's more important to find the right surgeon than it is for the patient to do so much, so much Google homework and worry about whether or not it's a laser or forceps or which laser. Come on. We all know the chef is more important than the kitchen. A good chef can make an amazing meal in just about any kitchen. Same with surgeons.